Hello, everyone. I'm Greg with Everyday Cycles, the bike store on the second floor in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, today, we've got an electric Omnium Cargo Minimax in the box here. This is the first time we're going to be doing an electric one of these. This is the factory version with the Shimano electric drivetrain, their cargo system, and belt drive and all the other good stuff. Uh, just curious to see how it's going to go together. And let's start taking a look at what came with it. It comes in two boxes. This has the frame and a bunch of other stuff in it. And then this is the wheel set for the bike. A trusty bench made out here. Let's see what comes in this box. All right. So, front fender, red, rear fender, red on, piece of cardboard, protect the uh, wheels or the hubs. All right. Try to come mount it up. This is a Shimano Inter 5 E hub, so it's a five speed internally geared hub made specifically for electric bikes. And it comes with a cog for the belt drive and a sensor for the drive system, as well as a center lock, disc brake, rotor, stadium a jigger. That's where you put the rotor on there. It's a technical term we use in the shop here. Thing of a jigger. And here's the front wheel, 20 inch through axle. Um, by the way, these are Schwalbe Big Ben Plus tires on both ends of this bike. It's a nice, beefy, commuter oriented city tire. It's got some decent tread on it. And it's about a 2.15 width tire. Uh, we've done another one of these that you may have seen a video on that uh, Dave Shlubowski did for dog packing. And he's got 2.4 treaded mountain bike tires on his. So there's plenty of room in the frame for whatever tire you might be thinking. And uh, oh, some fenders stay away in the bottom there. If you're not forgetting those. And... This right over here. Another bag of goodies. Rotors, brake rotors, and such. So we will work with that when we need it. All right, and in the big box, let's see how easy this is to deal with. It's Pretty uh, well protected and wrapped. Uh, this is the webbing system for the cargo area on the front of the bike. That we'll have to install later. This is an optional drop post. Um, it's going to be a demo for the shop, so I figured different people of different sizes are probably going to ride it, and a dropper makes it really easy. This is a. Uh, uh, da -da 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 -da. Who are these guys? KS, uh, KS height adjustable dropper post with a nice little lever that just goes under the seat, so it's super simple to deal with that. Like I said, that is an option. It's not a super steady one, but it is an option. Um, another option is this extender for the cargo area, which can make it quite a bit longer, up to about 18 inches or whatever that is. We'll mess with that later. So that's the extender for the front. All right, so the Shimano drivetrain, um, charger battery cord. And this is likely the battery because it's pretty big and heavy. It's a, uh, this is an OE system, so this isn't something that you can retrofit to your existing bike. Um, a lot of integration with the frame and with the with the uh, software that 
Shimano does and everything to make it a cargo compatible. And I just want to get this charging. Clear reading. While we do the rest of the build. Very good packaging, Shimano. Very good at putting stuff together. Here's some uh, information on the lithium-ion battery. And here is a lithium-ion battery. So this will obviously mount right into the frame. Not massive. It's a 36 volt, 14 amp hour, so it does have some decent uh, capacity. And that just goes right into the frame when we get to that point. And this is a charge cord. I think it just plumped right into the side of the battery from what I can tell. It put just, uh, instead of having a separate charger, all the charge circuitry is inside the battery itself. Which is kind of handy because then you can take this cord with you on your trip and recharge along the way. Simple things. So, yeah. The charged port right on the side here. All right, well, I'll have to figure that part of it out because, uh, yeah, we'll see. Maybe it needs to be on the bike to charge. Good question. We'll get to that when we get to that. All new to me. Maybe there's another video out there that people have done about this kind of thing. I'm just going to tear this box up and see if there's anything else in there that we need. I don't think so. So we'll leave that over here. All right. Um, continuing with the box. Likely the cargo deck itself. And what else is here? And maybe this is the diver. Uh, there's another box of stuff. Let's see what we got in here. It's like Christmas time. Seeing what all is in all these boxes. Don't know if my uh, microphone is cooperating. Hopefully, we get some decent audio out of this. I'm just wanting to flip over. We might take a break after this. Try and figure that out a little more. These uh, road, road, uh, what do they call those? Wireless goes uh, are really great, but they. Oh, here I am, Mr. Wrong Guy. This looks like a battery charger. It is a battery charger, so you'll have to take the charger with you, I guess. Would have been really cool though if we could put it on the side of it battery and not deal with it. Got more stuff. Uh, these are keys for the battery system. Here's the stock seed post that comes with the Omnium. Um, this is Minimax. Here is the stem. stem. Pedals. And a saddle. It's actually a pretty decent saddle. I've ridden a couple other uh, Omniums with the stock saddle on and it's really not bad for what you would get from an OE setup and some stem heads at the stacers. So more of those. Gonna give quite a bit of adjustability looks like. Alright. That is the parts box. Alright, I'll be right back. I'm going to go monkey with this thing so I can try and get it to stay somewhere so it doesn't keep blocking up. I'll be back. I have returned. All right, microphone tip. We'll just see if this works. I put it further up so that it's not flopping with the shirt. See if that works. I don't know. Maybe if you're doing this, you know a better way. But uh, without a collar, these things are kind of goofy. Anyway, I think we're getting to the goodness now. More padding. And a semi complete frame. If 
quite a bit of the assembly work is already done. Jack list. Cardboard stuff. And away it goes. All right, gonna get my trusty zip tie cutter. Not a ton of zip ties on this, which is kind of nice because it's a lot of plastic, but there's one up here. Lots of tape. By the way, if you order certain zip tie sets from Amazon or wherever, a lot of them come with this handy zip tie cutter. It's really nice. Comes right in with the uh, and then with the zip ties. All right. Allow us to scalpel precision this bag off of there without bashing the brand. Thank you very much. All right. Well, this is probably going to be a little bit tedious. Maybe I'll just zip through this thing and Catch you when I get the majority of the stuff off. That said, maybe there's something interesting in here we should look at. But here we go anyway. You may see me sooner, you may see me fumbling with this thing. Just want to get this off to put it up and stand. Use that stop seat post. You know, move that thing up a little bit, just because we need to have some lube in the frame anyway. It's my, uh, putting on some grease sound. All right, looks like we got a five. Millimeter. With these cargo bikes, it's always interesting to use a standard bike stand. They maybe we'll get a motorcycle uh, table or something. Like with the bullets, we typically just leave the front wheel on the ground and lift the rear up to access the drivetrain. It's real nice. No front wheel yet. Can't do that. Left. All right, bike in stand. Wow. Here's the first look at the Blurple paint job. This is the color Blurple, which, depending on where you look at it from, how the light's hitting it, it's either blue or purple. It's got some iridescence to it. I figured we might as well showcase. There are other colors. I know there's a black. There's a uh, copper, metallic copper. I think there's a gray one. Um, let us know. This is what we're doing. These are things we can get. Brandon from Omni almost just up here yesterday dropping this off after I get over to Madison. Well, the headset's already in. Watch my fingers. Sharp knife. Am I right? Doodads and gizmos. Slip. Here we got a belt for the drive system. They also make this with a traditional derailleur, but I was really curious about this Inter 5. It's the first time I'm going to be using one extensively. By the way, this bike will be available in Milwaukee for demos if somebody is interested in this. Uh, if not, there are other Omnium dealers around the country. I hopefully don't know exactly where, but I know there's one in Madison. Uh, but, wow, it's not that 
Work will just keeps looking better and better. And it'd be hard not to fall in love with this thing. All right, battery mount on one end, battery mount on the other end. Or the more I think about my idea <laughs> of just being able to plug in your bike no matter where you are and not having to carry your charger with you. Boy, that would have been really cool. Uh, as is, it's it, it's just like most other electric bikes that has a separate charger. For the, I think that would really you know make it simple for people. Um, the, um, you're right, with a score on yeah. Handlebar is already pre-wired and whatnot. Hopefully we can do this faster than we did Dave's bike. It's, that was a ground up build. Right on. Looks like we got a speed sensor on the drive side. Tape off of there. All right, and here we have a brake caliper installed but not adjusted. Very nice. I'll have to open that back up to get at it and uh, loosen. It's ready to. It's a, a SRAM brake. I think these are level something E. e it's their E version of one of their level system brakes. So it uses the Avid style. Um, it's got some different washers in here that are allowed to angle and whatnot to get it properly aligned with your brake roller. If you've ever done a BB-7 or something like that, very similar. Kickstand, power to install, very nice. Gonna save this phone for shipping stuff out. Never know when you need foam. Sure does take up room though. Is that knife? Hopefully. Just like Christmas, this is a all bunch of presents. This is the handlebar present here. Now. This is the computer present under here. Little, little display, very nice. SRAM Guide RE, that's what we're looking at for brakes in case you all want to that. Not handle bar. Looks like everything's installed here on the uh yep, if I remember right, how does this work? Yeah. There we go. I think I'll just put the stem on there now, just so that's out of the way. Yeah. It looks like a four millimeter by Cranky. It is a four millimeter. I think what you don't want to do is let this thing go slamming down all the way to the ground. Just I don't want to. We'll just put this stem on temporarily. Go back and grease those later. Oh, threads on the stem. Warm of the material, where are you?
We are in three. And four. Three. Then up. All right, at least that'll keep this thing from falling out while we're doing some other stuff. And we can put the handlebar on right away, get that out of the way too. Match the correlated outward groove on the stem cap with the inward groove on the upside of the stem. Well, that where that means, means I probably shouldn't change the orientation of these little clamps here because they're Minimalist, there's not a lot to these. There's a little grease on there. Nicely done. So I'm leaving the bolt in the bottom so I know that's the bottom. And away we go with this one. Seems to be adequate grease and pops with that. All right. Bottom. See how that works. That's what I'm about. That's like a puzzle. Puzzle for me to solve. Uh, good. Uh, looks good. You find your home there, buddy. There you go, little friend. Just putting these on to hold it out of the way. I'm not really adjusting it or anything. It's Cut this up when we're done and torque the stuff. These are five Newton meter torque spec. If you don't already have a nice torque tool, it'd probably be a good idea to get one. Uh, so we're in here is a couple different kinds. These types are a specific torque. This is four millimeters only, or sorry, four Newton meters only. This one is five Newton meters only. And this is an adjustable one where you can go anywhere from nine up to eight, I think, or somewhere in there. So very handy to have. Get different bit sizes so you can do all your torquing needs. And just getting all this stuff off of here. Through axle on the fork. That out, I got. Coming along, I'm coming along. It's going to look like a bike. Five millimeter again with Hoogie. Made it bigger. Uh, wait, it sticks in it. Six it is. Out comes red, off go those. Again with the grease. Grease. A little grease. Well spots like grease, especially something like this axle that doesn't hopefully need to get removed all that often. All right, I'm just gonna stick this back in here for a second while we put the loader on. So while the, hi there, how's it going? Looking at you, Whirlpool Halo. Uh, while the rear is a Shimano hub with a center lock, the front hub is a traditional six bolt. 
saw those before. Going to need a T25 probably for that. T25. Torches are green and part speak. While Allen Head or Hex Head are uh, blue handles. Or can you see me? <laughs> Hi there. How's it going? It's going crazy here. Oof. All right. These are um, the bolts for the rotor. But there's more stuff in here than just U bolt clamp. Well, okay. We, we stuff those rattle right around in here. Let's just get this rotor out. This is a Shimano rotor. And the The rotation is on the rotor. It also, all the words face out, so you're just gonna stick it on there and face the words out. Typically on a bolt like these that have a Loctite type coating on them, I don't normally grease these. I have in the past and haven't really had any problems, but especially with a quality brand like Shimano, I'm like, let's just let them do what they do because these things are Important to keep properly torqued, uh, and I don't see the torque spec on here. Usually, it's about six newton meters, though. Be my guess. Just on here, just like with anything with a bunch of with a bunch of bolts in a circle, we're going to tighten them up in a star pattern, and then we'll get the torque wrench out and to do the final torquing but so rotation you know the, the easiest the bit the, the brake caliper is going to clamp on it and if there's any movement at all like just the little just the littlest bit i just make it like it's stopping get it towards the back part of its movement it's very small some of them have a lot more movement than that you know what I have? Uh, this isn't going to take very long. I've got a cool um, DeWalt screwdriver that makes this job a snap, but I didn't really have it ready. Sit right there, I see it. It's in the yellow DeWalt bag. This won't take very long. Well, and then there we go. I should have timed this. I don't know how long this whole thing is going to take me. Not the fastest builder in the world. I don't get paid by the by the bike, so um, I am wondering where my bits are. For that. Honestly, after doing this for quite a while, I can usually feel them too. But oh yeah, oh yeah, these are two twenty fives. These are a security set. That have a hole in the middle. Some of the steel. And we're set at six already on this. This is kind of my go to for doing torquing on rotor bolts. So it's just going to put it in, turn it, tighten these up a little more. Almost torqued. What happens with these torque wrenches is they click when they're right. One click. You don't have to do fifty clicks. You just do the one, and it should be torqued right there to six newton meters. Thusly. All right. Can goes the wheel. Out comes the spacer that keeps the pads from squishing in. Let me shoot whatever first. I hit. Hey. 
is to loop up the axle. Mr. Greasy Finger, there's my trusted towel. Aha, I need my towel. Just like uh, the guy from Hitchhiker's Guide. I just got another towel. All right. Don't want to mess up this beautiful blurple paint job. I keep saying blurple has study. We are. Get this in the range of where it needs to be, and then we'll torque it later. That one's actually 10 newton meters. All right, on to the back. See what rear through axle. It is not a so it is a one that can be brought and then we can add uh, that story to the hub. Okay, okay. Taking a look at what we got here. It is a bolt on internally geared system and it has a um a card nut on the end and then these washers have a key on them, so they will locate in the dropout. Proper orientation. I think that thing plugs it here. I'm not. Yep, it plugs right into the end there, so. Should be able to tape out. It's going to be yeah. Our belt on it. Inky the boot. But I'll tell you, it's meant to go. That's a good word, that. All right. Because I didn't get up for all old grease on. Uh. So these keyed washers are going to go towards the outside. They'll sit on the outside of the dropout. See if I can look like you know what I'm doing here. Oh, you know what? I don't know what I'm doing. Let's put on that. And a lock rotor. Heads and bottom bracket jewel. All right. Auto bracket fuel. We're dinner. I'm going to put the words out again. And tell them no, left handed. So this is the lucky for the Bafang motors and the Lecky One Nut system, this is a tool you have to use on there because of the way that One Nut's made, so it's nice and deep. It's also a 3 8 drive, which is why I've got it out here, because that's with the torque wrench is. I've got a bigger torque wrench that is a half-inch drive, but we just have to get to 40 deep meters on this guy. Oh, go. All right, just like there's a key on this green washer to go on the dropout, there's also a key on the axle so that it's oriented correctly. 
Let's make it so that it's pointing in the same direction as the one on the other side. Now, now let's put this puppy in here. You're going to want this cane handy. Just so I can snug it up. And the only tricky thing to this I see is trying to make sure this little guy doesn't get stuck. It's part of the shifter mechanism. She built the spaceship. Ouch. Didn't even go. Just like in butter. So this thing can get smelled up real nice. The dropout on these Omniums is a rocker style dropout, so you can increase the tension on the belt so that it is nice and tight. Bigger. Yes. Goosey goosey right now, but uh, Brandon's recommendation on the tension was make that sucker tight, so let's get it snug up here first. Tight. There is a tool as well as a phone app to adjust the tension. It actually plays a note if you pluck the belt. Uh, we're going to start out with it pretty tight and just get some miles on it and let everything settle in and then we'll go back and adjust that. All right, well, we're pretty close here. I'm gonna to go to the restroom and I will be back. Here I am to save the day. Tires do I need scare? These tires. Milwaukee is quite a potholy city, so I typically run them a little softer than full pressure, 30 to 55 on these. Um, around 40 pounds probably be pretty good. Pops with the tire pressure a little bit, but. It's nice having a little cushion, but you want enough air there where you're not going to have a problem with pinch flats or whatever. But nice thing about uh, the volume of air on these tires is it doesn't take that much pressure. There. Thanks for the workout of the day. Or because a little tickle, tighten her up. Higher pressure tires, it's not too big a deal, but you run a real low pressure on a fat bike tire or something. 
good idea to flick that little stem and make sure it's seated so that you don't put air in your tire only to have it come back out again regularly. All right. Your front tire on. Forty. Very great. We will be adjusting the brakes. Swing that puppy right in there like that. Since I still have one of these Hayes feeler gauge caliper alignment tools, I still like to stick this in here when I do a caliper alignment. Back in the olden times, I just used a credit card, or not credit card, a uh, business card. Yeah, pretty close. Just a caliper gauge thing. For getting this to smidge in. A lot of this stuff, we do the initial installation, will take a set after it's ridden some. So, after a month or 50 miles or something, we'll take a look at it and get everything all teched up at that point, too. So, these work just as fine without the Without the little caliper gauge, silent, very. Alrighty, one could almost ride the spike now. So I think what I'm going to do now is take a little break. We're pretty close for the saddle on there. But I want to charge the battery before I do anything further, uh, because some of the adjustments are going to rely on the battery system being energized. Yeah, where's that cell? It's made by Velo, like a lot of cells out there. I see him up. This is it makes the fore aft adjustment separate from the angle of these 
see it. The algae are tight here. And I'll, if you're having trouble with the uh, uncomfortable this on your ride, you might just putz with your, um, just the tilt of the saddle, even just a millimeter or less can make a huge difference depending on how your body likes to sit on a saddle. Ah, let's throw pedals on it. Got it. Metal DP pedal, serviceable. You might want to throw something else on it somewhere down the road, but these will certainly work for now. They've got a little, a little grippy thing on them, but they're not as aggressive as like a mountain bike flat or a BMX pedal. Grease on that guy then. The bird. Yeah. There. Probably already know this, but pedals go forward when they go on and aft to take them off, which means one of the pedals is reverse threaded. He's got a tiny little. L or R on them, which will help you figure out what side they go on. All right, trusty out of range. Orange Unior. We're going to have to crank paddles on too tight, but tight enough that they're not going to. Come off on you. It's one of those things people don't change all that often once they find a pedal they like, but not a bad idea to take them off every so often. Plenty of grease out there. Alrighty. Certainly looks like a bike. Okay. Now we must make charging dumps the battery hat. Hey, I am imagining somewhere in this tip full A description. There's keys in there. Keys. There's also a cone. Looks like if you lose your key, maybe you can fit it back off. Wouldn't that be cool? A lot of the inexpensive motors, you lose your key. Or your battery, you're kind of SOL. All yeah. Going back to what I said before, it's such a great idea. I figure out a way to put a charger in there somewhere so we can plug and play. Well, depending on how you store your bike, you might. I'll take it off for the winter or something. Nice thing about a Shimano system is you know they've gone through all the certifications to make sure it's not going to New York apartment fire on you. No one needs that aggravation. And naturally, some kind of proprietary plug here.
All right. Where's my halberd? Well, Zena. She is plugged in. All right. Well, we'll take a little break. Let this battery charge up some. And uh, come back a little bit later. And we'll do a little testing with the shifting and the and the power thing. Oh, you know what else I could do? Just slowly wait. Get this cargo racked up on the tunt. Why don't I do that? That looks fun. Oh, you know what? <laughs> yeah. There's a video on, pretty sure it's on the Omnium site, about putting the Webby on this, and it's just a little time consuming. So I think what I'm gonna do is while this charges, I'm gonna put the web system on, and if you need to know how to do that, it's basically alternating the, the web. Um, there is a pretty, explanatory video online. I will put a link down in the show notes for that, but I don't want to bore you with that part of it. Not that the rest of this hasn't been either informative or boring, depending on your frame of mind about this kind of thing. And because these are kick-ass clear well, stem caps, I'm going to put them on there so I don't lose them. Alrighty. So, that is pretty much what it takes to put one of these things together. There's a couple things still to do. Add the rack on the front after I install the webbing and throw fenders on it is heck it's a cargo bike and it's probably going to be ridden in some crappy conditions and i think why didn't i put the fenders on but i'll do that in a little bit we'll probably just continue this video in a little while i'll just add it on to the end of this so this is greg everyday cycles bike store on the second floor milwaukee wisconsin omnia mini max e cargo bike and we'll continue this in a little bit Hi guys, I'm back. It's Greg, Everyday Cycles, bike store on the second floor. Uh, yesterday we got through pretty much a building this Minimax. There was just a couple things to do. It needed to be charged. Uh, apparently the Shimano battery comes mostly uncharged, so it needed to charge for a few hours. Uh, I have tested it on the stand. Uh, pretty simple, you turn it on on the battery and it's on, and different modes, eco mode, trial, or trail mode, boost mode, and then this is the shifter, which is an electronic shifter to the five-speed rear internally geared hub, belt drive, very nice. We're gonna take this out for a test ride in just a few minutes, but uh, all I have to do now is put the front cargo rack on, uh, I took this home last night and spent some time weaving. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier there is a nice video on Omnium's website that shows how this weaving process goes. It takes a little time. It's just a little finicky to get the straps on, especially the ones that go down the length of the outside of the rack here. Um, but I just watched some an episode of Fallout and pretty soon it was done. So this mounts very simply. Just got four bolt holes in it and it goes right on the front of the rack. Got some big old honking bolts. Gonna be a six millimeter, I believe. So let's see here. Oh boy, old guy, old guy knees going down. Uh, 
Okay, one down. I did grease these up a little bit just uh, in case this needs to come off. Uh, one thing Dave Schlebowski mentioned is that this will fit on a rear cargo uh, bike rack on a car or on a SUV or the like, uh, but taking off the cargo rack makes it not stick out. So uh, maybe we'll try that out too. Let's see. Oh, it's... All right, two down, two to go. Just moved the web strap out of the way just a little bit on that one. See how we're looking on the other end here. Okay. I think I'm gonna get in there without a ball head on the hex wrench just to get a good bite. Fortunately, should have another set somewhere. Squared off, not ball. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. All right, so that's pretty much putting the uh, Omnium E Mini Max together. I do uh, want to do just a couple of final adjustments when I get it off the stand and on the ground. I'm just going to set it up for my personal preferences on handlebar angle, seat bar angle, and the like. And then it's time to take it out for a test ride. So I'll see you on the road. <laughs>